Yeah, I need some high. Because, <laughs> because what ends up happening is like somebody gets all I do is get up get one person in there, hold the C spine. Thank you. 
Dispatch to a construction site at 2311 Davis Street for a person falling from a roof. PPE. Is it seems safe? PPE seems safe. Okay. I have one patient. One patient. And I've determined the mechanism of injury is a fall from the roof. It is a fall from a roof approximately uh, 20 feet. Fell from a roof. He was roofing, putting roof. Yeah, you know, doing roofing work on the roof when he fell. Doing roofing, he fell approximately 20 feet. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get uh, support called in and take C spine for me, please. Let's go ahead. Since he fell, I'm going to put that C collar on. Hello, sir. I'm Aaron. This is Deja. We're with the Cap Fire. Okay, he responds by groaning. Okay. Get that C, C collar secured. We got some grunting. Uh, so, my impression of the patient. He is pale, he appears to be diaphoretic. Um, and uh, does not track your movement. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get this airway open. Can you grab me a opiate? Okay. When you touch his face, he still grunts. Okay. He has a gag reflex when you attempt the oral airway. Okay. Uh, I need an MPA. All right. Don't uh, don't put the uh, stuff in there. We're gonna say it's in there. I'll get some spray in a little while. Okay. And how is this uh, raise I'm looking? Am I seeing adequate chest rise? He does and fall? have adequate chest rise and fall. Okay. Let's go ahead and get him on the non rebreather. Give it to me at uh, 12 liters per minute. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and check a radial pulse. His radial pulse is uh, fast, weak to absent. Fast. Weak to absent, okay. And I'm trying to get a carotid pulse as well. Okay, you have a carotid pulse present. Okay, what's the rate for that? Uh, 126. 126, okay. Where's Mr. Squad? You guys can enter. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, will you go ahead and get a blood pressure, please? Jones? And I'm going to determine this patient as a high priority. High priority. Checking blood uh, pressure. I'm going to attempt to get a sample. Okay. Uh, patient uh, is not unable to answer your questions. Okay. Is there anyone around? Uh, there's some other workers that uh, they don't know his medical history. Okay. Blood pressure 90 over 40. Okay. Oh, we don't have the piece for the non group, so we got the tennis on. So we'll be fine. Not reading now. 
Uh, go ahead and give me a pulse oximetry as well. And as they're going with setup, I'm going to start doing some with my decap DTLS. Okay. Starting at the head. All right. Excuse me. All right. I'm going to start palpating the scalp. All right, looks like you're palpating his forehead. Are you palpating the back of his head as well? Yes. I can't see. Okay. So you feel um, a contusion to the left occipital region of the skull. Feels kind of mushy there. Okay. Uh, any bleeding? No obvious bleeding. Okay. Um, moving down the face, the mandible appears, appears to be stable. No blood in the ears. Okay. Uh, do I see any spinal step off? As I come down, come the the you do not. Uh, how about the uh, trachea? Uh, is trachea midline? is midline. Okay. All right, moving down to the shoulders. Shoulders are stable. Uh, I need a stethoscope. What's the uh, what is O2 sensor? His O2 stat is going to be 94% with that non rebreather. I palpate the chest. Chest appears to be stable. Okay. Listening for lung sounds. They're clear on the left. Clear on the left. Okay. Clear on the right. Clear on the right. Yep. Clear on the le left lower. Clear on the right lower. Okay. Heart sounds. Am I hearing anything? They're crisp. Crisp. Okay. Moving down to palpating the abdomen. Starting with the upper right. Our patient grunts when you do that, and the abdomen appears to be firm. Appears to be firm? Okay, yep. do I notice any contusions or anything? You notice a large contusion to the left upper quadrant. Left upper quadrant, okay. Checking his blood sugar. All right, blood sugar is going to be 96. All right, that right lower quadrant that you just touched is good. All right. And left lower quadrant is good, but you just feel like uh, the abdomen appears to be distended. Okay. And moving down to the pelvis. Pelvis is stable. Pelvis is stable. Okay. Going to start with the right leg. All right. Palpating uh, down. Uh, right leg is uh, is firm. It's no obvious signs of trauma. Okay. Do I have a pedal pulse? You do. No, I'm sorry, you don't. No pedal pulse. No pedal pulse present. And moving over, starting with the left foot, checking the pedal pulse there. All right, no pedal pulse present. Okay, and moving up the leg. Okay, no obvious signs of trauma. Okay. And I'm going to go over to the left arm. Okay, left arm is uh, has some abrasions. Okay. Uh, but no obvious signs of fractures. Okay. Moving back around to the right. All right, patient appears to have a fracture to the left radial. Left radial. It's closed. All right, gotcha. Coming up, no other obvious injuries. Okay. Well, then, we're going to get this guy rolled. We're going to start with the head man's count. Thank you. You can do that. Leave it there. All right, did you make sure? Yeah. Crossover arms. Yeah. Be careful, we are considering some damage to the spinal. Are you ready? My count one, two, three. All right, back down one, two. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. Can you uh, All right. help it? I'm sorry. All right. How's the All right, it appears to be stable. Stable. stable, stable, it's stable. Everything going down. Yeah, no obvious signs of hemorrhage or no signs of injury to the posterior. All right. Going back down. One, two, three. All right. Slide up. Ready? Ready? One, two, three. Got you. All right. Let's get instructed. Yeah, 
make control. This is squad one. We are about to transport a patient, male, early 30s, with a suspected spinal injury, along with a few contusions. Current vitals are a pulse of 126, BP 90 over 40, uh, pulse ox 94%. We've got very weak rapid pulse in the extremities. Uh, we've treated for shock and we're treating with a non rebreather at the moment at 12 liters per minute. We should be at your location in roughly five minutes. Okay. Understood. Let's get this guy ready for transport. Do you want us to bring the um, bed out? I want you no, but I do want you to put those head blocks on that are behind you over there somewhere. Uh, I've actually never done that. I know, so. and that's okay. We'll see if you guys can work through it. You don't have to tape it to the backboard. Uh, you can just actually just put that as like a cushion underneath his head. It's going to flip to the other side. Flip it around if you don't mind. There you go. Maybe it's going to have a side of Yeah. To support the neck. I think it's going Yep, and the Velcro, I think, goes across the top right here. It does. Don't don't tape it, though, because I won't mess the back up. So, like that? Yep. That'll work. Okay. Since we've got four of us, we can do a four person lift. All right. right, That's good. You don't have to lift him. All right. Anything else that you guys want to do? I want to, I would do a reassessment probably (laughs) right after we got him up onto the stretcher. I got you. Um, I'm mainly focusing on uh, the color of the skin, assessing that, making sure uh, that oxygen level continues to rise a little bit because it was All right. on that borderline. All right, tell Meg Control to come back in. Okay. Where's Meg? Um, yeah, in terms of the contusions, there's not much we could do for those, right? Right. It was more folks breathing spine. That's exactly right. And treat for shock otherwise. Absolutely. Okay. No applause. You guys can go ahead. You guys can go ahead and bust him down too. You can go ahead and take him off the backboard. Oh, you wrote it down. Yeah. Yeah. She wants us to do that. Okay. Smart. For when you go. It wasn't really on my part. Five minutes, Daniel, quick detail. I got to go downstairs and let somebody in. I'll be right back.
we're going to talk about this. I want to see y'all. You're good? I'm cool. I know you're good. Yeah. I'm good. It's just it's hot. Well, I was just like, it's trauma, so I had to be rapid. Yeah. And then the thing I was worried about was he was like, to me with like a new injury. It was like, I wanted to take note of that. But they Next weren't. Time you, he gave me a lot of distracting the injuries there. Uh, yeah. Like, um, I'm going to write them down. Like, 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 yeah. like, you know, the fracture on the arm. Yeah. yeah. Down with the I would say write them down. Because she came back and did the treatment. Yeah. Because as I was going through. I was just like, oh, that would have been uh, once we reassessed, we could start treating those secondary injuries. I wasn't worried about those, and most of them we couldn't do anything about it anyway. There's one fracture on the right radial that we could have splinted. And otherwise, it was contusion. So I mean, there's no external bleeding, it was all internal. Yeah. There's nothing you can really do about that if it's, it's still internal. So, oh, it wasn't bleeding out. It wasn't bleeding, it was internal. So, I was, was, that, was that less than 10 on the, uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. On the uh, ab, when it was a contusion on the ab, and yeah. you said it was distended, that was like, I know y'all can't do nothing about that. That's a, that's a hematoma, right? Yeah, that would be a hematoma there. And that's all stuff, like, as I was going through it, the only thing we could have oh. actually treated that I saw was the radial fracture. But yeah. that's that secondary was a anyway. And that's not like that. Yeah. Aren't you supposed to put pressure on the no, 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 no. no. <laughs> what were, no, what were no, they talking about? What was like, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. I forget. I was one of the instructors that was talking about it. It was like, if there's a total bleeding, you could probably stop the bleeding. If you put pressure, you know, he was saying that there was also, like, you know, a chance or something. Yeah, they're all the nice around. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know that was an I really, once I told you guys to do something, I really did not want to go back and check your work. I mean, what I did to Ava, um... Work was right here. You got it. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm still fine. Yeah. So, you know what? I think we did pretty well. That was smooth. Yeah. It was at the point where, like, I would say, okay, I need you to do this, and you... Yeah. Wasn't checking anybody's. Like, you guys, like, yeah, okay. All right, everybody, this is my daughter Brooke. Hey. Hello. Hey. Uh, she's going to be using my office for a homework. Uh, so, I'm going to get there's a lot of like hey oh. mm. there's a lot of secondary oh. injuries in there that was right in the money uh there's like three or four yeah. 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 okay so <laughs> evaluation evaluation well hang on let me yeah let me start let me start with them first though so, so what do you think? Anything you thought went well, didn't go well? You think uh, you might look at doing different next time? Um, one thing that I want to do differently next time, for sure, is with once I get to the secondary assessment, um, kind of having someone noting down the discoveries that you're going right. through. Because it's easy to forget what was what. I know in my head, the way I was doing it was just initially processing, is this an immediate life threat or not? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't moving on. Gotcha. Um, but for giving the patient report to the emergency department on the end, I think it'd be helpful to list those things as I go. And I had enough help for somebody to be able to do that. Right. Um, I thought my team overall, I didn't once I made the decision on what the appropriate treatment was and assigned it to somebody. They just handled it and mm -hmm. I didn't have to recheck their work or anything like that as I went, which right. is very helpful. Um, I don't think I missed any immediate life threats okay. with that. I could be wrong. Um, I thought we did a good job with the uh, backboarding and moving as a team overall. All right. 
Now let's go to the evaluation. I'm going to try to. All right. All right. What do you guys think? Uh, um, I might miss it. I could I'm struggling over here. Uh, when you came in and you did the uh, your ABCs, I think you were supposed to like check for those life threats before. I think you went straight to like ABCs, then the vitals, and then another thing that would probably made a quick when you would have checked for the um, life threats in the that primary assessment. Mm -hmm. Like when you check the back, split the backboard right under him, it would kind of save just a little bit of time. That's what we did. Well, I'm talking about like when you see him come in, like PP seen safe. Yeah. Yeah, I checked his his alertness. Yeah. But then like all right, you checked his like his pulse. You checked his pulse and all that stuff first before right. you like, all right, let me see if he bleeding anywhere or having life threats or something like cool. landed on a rake. I don't know. Okay, I see what you're saying. That'll have to come though inside the general impression. Mm -hmm. Like he asked for a general impression. Yeah. If there's a life like, threat at that moment. Then I have to because you would see it. Right. You would see it. All right. Yeah, I thought you guys did great. The teamwork was on point. Uh, you know, it was really uh, seamless. Everybody knew what they were doing. Everybody had their roles set down. And um, I think one thing I just had a question on was like, uh, it's not a knock against y'all, just the hematoma thing. Because I noticed he said um, one contusion was distended. So I know that's probably a hematoma. I'm just like on medical control. When you're calling medical control, instead of saying two contusions, would you say one contusion, one suspected hematoma, just so that the hospital's prepared to drain or whatever? I don't, I don't really know. I'm asking. But like, uh, other but than that, I think did great. Same contusion is fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, overall, great job. Teamwork was there, communication was there. Uh, I've seen, compared to the beginning of when we all started doing the patient assessment, uh, the confidence is there. We've talked about that in the past, and now the confidence is starting to shine light. So uh, you all are building that confidence, um, checking the blood pressure, and getting the oxygen on time, noticing that there's possible shock, uh, and taking care of that, keeping them warm in temperature, because that's pr primarily what we're there to do is make sure that he doesn't decline any further and just keep him comfortable as possible. So um, overall, you guys did a great job. I mean, the one thing that you, you could have checked for spinal injury is uh, check for um, prioritism, you know, yeah, it's a yeah, fall. I didn't do that. So that's one thing I noticed that was dropped off. But other than that, you guys did good. Um. I also think y'all just did really good. They all said that y'all worked really well together, so I'm not going to hold y'all up. Y'all did good. All right. So some stuff I've got for you guys. Um, so once you decide that C-spine is indicated, you have to put somebody on that head, and they cannot let go until they're taped to the backboard. Okay. That's one thing. So I think that was a misinterpretation on my part. I thought once you had the collar on, it was – considered stable at that point but right so and I, I kind of like I don't know if should be moving or not so yeah that was me too that's fine I just it, I don't know we just started trauma so you know I'm not I, you know I don't know if y'all were, were really informed on that anyway so yeah so have somebody hold manual c-spine control okay until that happens the next thing I have is so Patient had a possible closed uh, skull fracture yeah. to the occipital region. And what did we put in for an airway adjunct? Uh, should have been nasal cannula, I think. Well, no, no. I mean, I'm just saying. So, is the um, nasal airway that we put in, right? Oh, yeah. What's the contraindication? Yeah, right. So, it's a relative contraindication, okay. though. I was trying to think about that. So, so relative that. contraindication um, <clears throat> because of that. So it's something that you guys are going to have to consider in the field because okay. airway is we got to have airway. Yeah. Right. We got to have an airway. Um, the chances of 
sinking that nasal airway into to the to the uh, to the uh, basal brain area is just it's not realistic to me, but it's something that you should consider. Okay. Um, In most cases, would you still go ahead and? Do I, the yeah. So it's like I said, it's 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 one of those relative contraindications, right? Okay. I'm not going to let somebody sit there and desat and lose an airway over the the slim chance that I'm going to sink that nasal airway in, inside the you know inside the skull. So yeah. I, okay. I, that's so it, it it's something to think about, right? Okay. It's something that if you get it next time, maybe just, just discuss with the team. Or, okay. Say okay. hey, look, you know, or or to to whoever's evaluated you, hey, um, you know what is the SATs currently? You know maybe we do a non rebreather. We could look at his chest rise and fall. You know maybe we monitor that airway. We don't use it. Okay. Right. Unless that evaluator is painting a picture of it's airway, you're not keeping it, you know, unless I do yeah. this, you know what I mean? Okay. Come think about um, When you're communicating with the trauma center or to the hospital, right? You're on the, on the radio. You have to paint a picture of a critically ill trauma patient because a few contusions, it's not going to, they're not going to activate the trauma team for that. Okay. So when you're giving your report, explain the mechanism. It's a okay. 26 year old male who fell from a roof approximately 24 feet. Okay. Patient is currently conscious, however, confused. He's alert and oriented times one. Okay. He's moaning in response to pain. Pa you know, patient has been nonverbal for, for our entire encounter here so far. Presents with the following injuries. Like you said, okay. you know, yeah. You don't have to go into such crazy detail of like patient has a small contusion to the left pinky. They don't yeah. care, right? The they care stuff. about though the core. Okay. Patient presents with ultramental status, large contusion to the left upper quadrant. We found the abdomen to be firm and distended. Right. Okay. That's gonna get their attention. That's gonna get an activation. Okay. Right. So that's what that's so once we discover part of remember I said part of the being a you know, for the EMT here, people go, well, I mean, you can't do anything. Well, really, you can't, right? And you have to be an expert communicator. Right? So that, okay. in order, yeah, so that the trauma, so the patient goes to the right facility and the right facility is prepared for them, right? And I've, I've been on calls professionally, right then to the hospital, listened to their report and said, hand me the phone. Can you call it? I'll call the hospital back because the report you just gave is not going to get us a room. You know, yeah. let me get a room. So I'll talk. I'll tell you, hey, I think we left out a few things. You know, patient uh, is currently on BiPAP. Patient's this, patient's that. Yeah. You know, oh, okay, we'll get a room ready. That sort of thing. Okay. Um, and the only other thing I would recommend is everybody check your jump bags. Make sure you're not a breather's are ready to roll. Make sure that so we can plug in. Uh, it's okay. I'm not. I didn't know that's my fault because I didn't know that this was a nerve breathing too. I want to think just the math piece. I so thought definitely. That's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying this makes the call go like better when, when we can role play. The yeah. more role playing we have, the better we are in the field. All right. Any questions on med control? Sorry, I skipped you guys. How was their report? I mean, is it, the way they did it was. Yeah, I thought their report was good as far as just sharing the general information. It was clear to understand. Yeah. Um, but if I had been on the other end of that in real life, I would have said, okay, well, we get a room in minor care. What are you talking? Yeah. yeah. Didn't paint that. Right. Of the trauma. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, any more questions from anybody? I say good job, man. I say it was good. Thank you. You're welcome.